Let's make vinegar out of a popular American pastry. I start by putting four Pop-Tarts in a glass jar. This will give me 60 grams of sugar, and once added to fresh spring water, I should end up with a 5% alcohol solution. This is the very first step in vinegar making. Wild yeast will show up and convert the sugars to alcohol. It's important that we use spring water here and not tap water. Tap water contains chlorine, and chlorine stops the yeast from converting sugar into alcohol. Once I have my jar filled with water, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it, put an elastic band around it, and leave it on the counter for a few days. In exactly three days, we already had some action. There was bubbles showing up in the form of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the byproducts of yeast when they convert sugar to alcohol. And since we have bubbles showing up, that means we have alcohol too. I wanted to make sure all the dissolvable sugars were dissolved into the liquid. So I gave it a really good stir and I put it back on the counter for another few days. After another three days, this is what it came out looking like. I started skimming off all the solids. And once I did this, I noticed a problem. I had oil floating on the top of my alcohol. This was a problem because oils are fat and fats go rancid after a while. So I wanted to make sure that I got them out of my jar. This was an easy fix because oil is less dense than water. It floats on the top of the liquid, which means all I needed to do was grab a piece of paper towel and let it soak up all the oil. You can see by the yellow stain that the paper towel did its job and soaked up all the fat. Next, I strained off the alcohol from the solids and moved it to a clean jar. Once moved to a clean jar, we then start the second part of vinegar making. This portion of the process is also a fermentation, but instead of yeast, we have bacteria. The bacteria take the alcohol and convert it into acetic acid. This is what we know as vinegar. I cover it with a coffee filter and move it back to the counter. I let it sit here for two weeks and stir once each day. After the two weeks are up, we have vinegar. It's lost all of its color and the sediments have settled to the bottom. It smells strongly of vinegar and has no alcohol smell, so that means the fermentation has finished its course. Just to be sure that we have vinegar, I want to use a piece of litmus paper to test the pH. This special paper will change colors and let me know the pH value of the liquid. If it's between 1 and 4, we have a vinegar. If it's above 4, it's still acidic, but it won't be shelf stable nor safe for consumption. As you can see here, the liquid has turned the strip yellow, and that's showing up around a 2.5 and a 3. Since it has hit the target pH for vinegar, we can go ahead and bottle this up. This is a simple project that can be done with fruit and water. All you have to do is just add your favorite fruit to a glass jar, top it with water, and let it sit on the counter until it starts fermenting. I have many shorts explaining this process in detail, so go and check them out.